Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's podcast is really going to move the needle in your marketing. But before we talk about today's guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist listings, your Facebook listings. I don't know what you're doing. Go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I am great. How are you? I'm a little tired. I'm a little tired. 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 A little tired. I'm a, a little, lot tired, man. Yeah, but, but today's guest is going to give us energy. I hope so. I need you know, a lot of Yeah, do you know why he's going to give us that energy? Tell me. Because Adam Earhart is a marketing growth consultant that helps business owners and entrepreneurs double, triple, and 10x their leads and customers. That gets me going. That really does. That gives me energy. What about you, Scott? Hey, 10, 10x of anything is all good to me. Yeah. When, when, you know, when, when we can get a, a podcast guest that can do that for our listeners, that's big. We, we, we've done something, Scott. I good think on so. Us. Yeah. Good on yeah. us. Uh, so Adam's been studying marketing and what makes successful individuals and companies so successful for years and the simple principles that have enabled uh, him to help himself and his clients build and grow value producing the highly profitable businesses. Um, he believes that marketing is the single most important element in business success and that strategy should always, always form the foundation of any marketing campaign. Adam Earhart, how are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me here, guys. So Adam, how, how do you wake up one day and be like, you know what, let's 10 exit and I can oh, do it for you. What, yeah, what, like, how does that even start? How does that even start? Are you looking for like the backstory of how the process works, which well, give me, give me the backstory. <clears throat> cool. So the backstory is essentially my background is as a corporate business jet pilot. So I used to fly uh, like Forbes billionaires and celebrities and, and royalty and all those, uh, all those type of people all around the world in Europe and the Middle East and North Africa and, uh, and did that for years. So that was my original sort of introduction into this world of business, but it was always kind of the business side of things that, that really got me going. I don't know if you ever, you ever talk to pilots, they tend to just absolutely love it. And I liked it, but it was never, it was never my super thing. I always liked kind of the business aspect of it. So I was just able to soak up a ton of all um, amazing, amazing knowledge and have a ton of really good mentors over the years and decided, all right, cool. We've got to take some of these principles and some of these practices and apply them. So left flying and started a marketing agency. And uh, from there, it's sort of, it's been, um, uh, pardon the pun, but yeah, it's really taken off. So you've got three strategies or three principles, I should say. Yeah. Str yeah. Right. So can you kind of walk us through them? Well, essentially the main, the core of everything is strategy. That, that's really it. So what happens is when a lot of people are talking about marketing, they're talking about growing their business and they're looking at all that. They're always looking at these shiny new objects and these tactics they can use. And we talk about social media a lot and everybody sort of goes down these rabbit holes and Hey, Instagram, are you on Instagram? Oh, we got to do Instagram or, Oh, we got to try Twitter or we should be on YouTube or we'll see this. And the problem is, is they're all tactical based. And if they're not rooted in this fundamental strategy that kind of lines everything up about, all right, who you're trying to reach, what's your message, how you're going to deliver it. All that's kind of just, it's a waste of time, a waste of energy and a waste of money. So again, everything comes back to strategy. Okay. So Scott Todd, when you hear Adam talk about shiny marketing object syndrome, did it, did it burst your bubble a bit? No, cause I, I firmly believe that. Like, I, I think that that's the problem. I think that people, there's so many choices that you have when you're starting out that it's overwhelming. Okay, and then you try to do what we talk about, Mark, which is to be omnipresent, be everywhere, right? And even then, when we say that, it, I, I don't think that we really mean like, okay, go be everywhere because you really can't be. Uh, you know, as, as he just said, you have to have a strategy behind the platform, you know? And so if you're gonna say, well, I'm gonna dominate Twitter, I'm gonna dominate Facebook, and I'm gonna dominate, well, you're gonna be too spread you know, spread too thin, if you will. And then you're not going to dominate anything. What, where I see the people who are succeeding is they take, they take a channel and they dominate it. Like I dominate in, Cra in Craigslist, right? D David Banalis dominates in, in Facebook, 
Okay. And you know, it's only if he were to try to say, well, I'm going to be everywhere to everything and, and, and he'd be nothing. Yeah. So Adam, once you have your strategy, then what? Well, essentially, then it really comes down to how are we going to, basically, how are we going to implement the strategy? And believe it or not, that's kind of the, I don't want to call it the easy part, but that's really straightforward. Essentially, if you've, if you've set the framework and the groundwork and the foundation for what you're going to do, really, you just kind of have to keep your eye on the prize. Uh, if you've done it right, if you've set everything up and you've, you've sort of done your due diligence, really, you just got to put in the work and then try not to get distracted. And I mean, I know that is such a, it's a tricky thing to do because when I first started, I did literally everything like I did every channel and every tactic and shiny object I chased and and essentially what my work day went is from eight hours to 10 hours to 12 to 14 to 16 to, and it just kept growing because there was never enough time to do it and eventually you, you reach that burnout phase which everyone's going to hit if you try and do everything so really you get that strategy then you just put it into practice now fortunately there are a few things there's no one size fits all of course but there are a few things that tend to work ridiculously well for the vast majority of markets and industries and businesses and of course one of those main topics is facebook and specifically facebook ads yeah i mean adam it's like the it's like the hot new thing and so my question is, is that if everyone's going to Facebook and marketing's constantly changing and we know, you know, like it makes me think of, uh, uh, what's, what was that, uh, that commercial Scott, where's the beef, right? Yeah. Right. Like Wendy's where's the beef? Like that worked for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but then we all got sick of it. Will we all start getting Facebook ad fatigue? And then we have to go to a new platform. Is, yeah. that, is that something in the back of your mind? Because everyone's talking about Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. And then everyone goes to Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Facebook and instead of looking at cat videos, we're, we're you know, checking on, on these you know, ads. And then we're like, oh, oh, I've, I've been on that webinar. I've mm -hmm. seen that webinar. And then yeah. you've got webinar fatigue. And yeah. now webinars don't work. Yeah. So help me, Adam. What do cool. we do? Cool. Okay. Well, a couple things here. Uh, first of all, yeah, webinars totally still work. And, uh, and all of that stuff still totally works. And it works amazingly well if, here's the caveat, if you do it well and if you do it right. And that's the thing is that Facebook ads are, in my opinion, just the greatest invention and uh, introduction to marketing that, that we've maybe ever seen. I mean, it's given us access to like literally billions of people and for pennies on the dollar of what traditional marketing and advertising costs. So the thing is, though, is that with this access, there's a really low barrier to entry for it. I mean, a lot of business owners, a lot of people interested in sort of promoting whatever service or product they have, they're able to get into the market for a few bucks, right? So what happens? is it floods it with really terrible, terrible, terrible advertising. Like you get a lot of this yell and tell and sell and like, hey, buy my stuff. And here's just a whole bunch of stuff that, um, that you can do for me. So give me all your money and maybe I might deliver something good. So you're getting all this like really spammy, awful marketing. And fortunately for those out there who are willing to put in the time and, and really understand their target market, really clarify their message, focus on providing value first, all those sort of key tenets that, that I talk about, uh, you're really able to kind of rise above the noise. And when you focus on providing that value and helping your customers and your clients and sharing your knowledge and your information, yeah, there's always going to be somewhere for that to happen, uh, whatever channel you want to use, whether it's pardon me, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's YouTube, whether it's your email list or through a webinar, whatever it is, the key is just you got to do it right. You got to do it well. And you got to put in the time ahead of time to build that foundation. And again, that, that word, that strategy. But how do we know when we've, when, you know, how, how long before we know a campaign works or doesn't work? Cool. Right? We, how much money do we need to put in? Awesome. That's such a good question. We know with traditional media, like newspapers, like magazines, like television, uh, we know months and months later after we've put in four, five, six figures, right? Like we just, uh, did it work? Did it not? We don't really know. With Facebook ads, we know within 24 to 48 hours after we've put in something as little as 10 to $20, it really depends on how much you want to sort of break out your targeting. So um, not sure how familiar is your audience with Facebook ads? If I start getting super nerdy and techie here, are we going to, I mean, Scott, would you agree? Our, our audience is pretty, uh, pretty geeky. 
I, I think so. Yeah. So let, let's let's get down to the numbers. Let's Beautiful. Do it. Yeah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna totally geek out then here. And just stop me if I get too nerdy because I can I can rabbit hole this and, and tangent it pretty quick. But basically, the way that uh, Facebook set up is you've got your campaigns, which are your kind of high level thing. Then you've got your ad sets, which is where you would do your targeting and your interests and break out your demographic, geographic, psychographic variables. Then you'd have your ads, which are the actual text and image copy and uh, and how you would structure it or video ads if you want to do. So the thing is, is that you can start with a very small budget if your targeting is on point. And that's the thing is like, if you want to put say $5 a day in two different ad sets and test it for 48 hours, you can do that. The key is make sure that one ad set is maybe targeting your warm audience or people who are on your email list or visited your website anything like that. And then maybe test a cold audience of people who are really kind of niched down. So pick an age range that you know your market fits into, pick a certain number of interests that they would have, websites they visited, magazines they might read, and really kind of get it down to like a million people or so. Try not to have those 20 million people in your audience. Um, and then really kind of focus down again and pick the placements of where it's going to work. Because right now, Facebook's rolled out a whole bunch of new placements. You've got audience networks and messaging and all this stuff. We like to just stick with the news feeds. So we use a desktop news feed and we use a mobile news feed and we test them against each other and see which one's going to convert. But all this can be done five, 10 bucks a day, test it for a couple days, see if you're getting the conversions, are you getting the leads or people coming in? And if it works, then you scale it up. And if not, well, you scrap it and you test something else. And it's, it's really an iterative process where you always want to be testing until you end up with what I call a super ad, which happens after a few weeks, a few months, a few years where you've just split tested the living heck out of it. And you end up with this amazing ad, which typically uh, as a general rule of thumb, you can turn on and off and it's going to continue to perform well. So an ad set that performs well now, it's likely going to perform well in a month or two. So whenever you need more leads or more business, you just flick it back on. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Okay. So it sounds great. Yeah. I love it. Right. But I don't have time to tinker with it. Cool. What do I do? Two options there again. Really, when it comes to business and life, we normally have one or of two different resources. We have more time or we have more money. So we've got to take a look at it and we've got to, first of all, we've got to prioritize it. So this is incredibly important, whether your goal is to get more leads, more brand awareness, whatever it is, you've really got to kind of focus there. And then you've got to decide, all right, how much is this worth? Uh, am I going to A, learn how to do this myself. And there's a number of great coaches and mentors and trainings. Uh, there's some free stuff, some paid stuff, all different levels for all different types of personalities, depending on who you click with. So you can learn it or you can hire someone. So you can hire a marketing agency. You can hire a consultant. You can hire uh, from the high end to the low end. I mean, there's, again, there's a lot of different people out there. If you're going to hire someone, make sure to look at their results, what they've been able to do. Look at their client list, obviously have a chat with them because again, the barriers to entry here, they are pretty low. So anybody can call themselves that quote unquote consultant or agency very quickly. And it's, again, it's, it's a pretty quick way to lose money if you choose the wrong, uh, the wrong business or the wrong model here. Yeah. I mean, you know, Mark, that's the problem with marketing is no one knows until you do it. Right. Um, and you know, if you, you talk to a marketer, they're like, Oh, I guarantee you, I'm going to get your results. Like, uh Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I There's mean, a you know, yeah. But you know, but what I like about your, your method is like, let's start with strategy first. Let's get our messaging right first. And you know, starting and stepping back and looking at exactly whom you're targeting, right? So for our land investing niche, we might step back, like, okay, we're going to go after preppers, right? And we're not just going to go after preppers. We're going to go after preppers that, you know, shop at Nordstrom. And we're not just going to, you know, look at preppers that shop at Nordstrom. We're going to look at preppers that shop at Nordstrom that are men ages, you know, 40 to 65, yeah. right? And so you, you, get, you narrow it down and then all of a sudden you come up with that that perfect ad that speaks to them and their fears of, hey, I know you're hoping for the best, but let's prepare for the worst. And this 40 acre parcel is exactly what you need to bug out to. That's right. it. Exactly. And the, the key there, I think you hit really two awesome points there is that first of all, you know, your market. So you know who you're going. And again, that comes back to that strategy. It's going to be the new S word, but you come back to, you know, who your market is. And so you really have to use that empathy. You've got to put yourself in their shoes. All right. What are they thinking? How can I approach this from them? Because the person that wins here is not 
who gets their customer to understand them best, but who understands their customer best and who makes their customer feel understood. That's where you win. And the second thing is, once you've got that, yeah, split test it out. Like we've got clients where if we're running a brand new campaign, we've never tested it before, we'll break it out just like crazy. We'll have hundreds of different ad sets. We'll test different decades. We'll test different interests and genders, languages or magazines they might read. And we will find that one key thing. Like we've got one client right now where it's been a few months and we've now got the super ad. We've got something that's perfectly targeted for men between the ages of 45 and 65 who live in the States, who speak English, who have a couple different interests. And this audience just dominates. It literally 10 X's everything else even combined, whatever it is about the product or the service that it is, it is literally 10 times as effective as everything else, which, which has allowed them to, again, 10x that revenue in a very short period of time. So again, all about testing, all about knowing your audience. I love it. I love it. Now, why do you say design matters? Design matters. Design matters because we are judged on our appearance. We always have been. We probably always will be. Uh, we're just, it's too quick. It's too subconscious and too primal for us to kind of look at someone and size them up real quick and say, all right, are they credible? Are they important? Also, competition is at an all-time high. So we need to focus on design. We need to make sure that we're coming across and I think the most important thing, again, I'm really going to just abuse this strategy word here on this, uh, on this chat here. But again, you want to make sure that you're strategic about what message you're trying to put out there. And a lot of people will just kind of throw some stuff up and they're not really cognizant or they're not really aware of how they're being perceived and how they're being received. So there's a reason that the majority of time I've got a, a color on because I tend to look a little younger than I am. So it adds, adds a little bit of credibility to it. Or there's a reason that I tend to wear a lot of blue or a lot of black it adds a level of kind of sophistication to an otherwise relatively creative field. So I am in a creative field of marketing, but also the level of strategy and sort of sophistication that I like to apply to it, that kind of separates my brand. So I'm very aware and strategic with how I've sort of laid that out. And I think that's really important for everyone to do, even if you're not going to invest in these super expensive websites or new photographers or new videos, just to be aware of, all right, what image am I trying to convey? and then make sure to incorporate that across all aspects of your brand. And the market never lies. Can the you market, explain that, Adam? The market never lies. Yeah, it's, we like to think that, we're, um, that we've, we're coming across in a certain way. We like to think that we've got a message that is being uh, a new service or a new product that is just, it's a no-fail system, right? It's, this is the best thing that has ever come out. Well, the market's going to decide that. So we can do everything that we can, but it's that uh, sort of the Keynesian economics there, Adam Smith, the invisible hand of the market. It's the, the one thing I took away from economics back at university, but basically you put it out there and the market's going to decide if it's worthy or if it's not, they're going to help you decide on um, whether there's demand for it. They're going to help you decide on the price. They're going to help you decide how to position it. And that is where the importance of split testing and testing different messages and different offers really comes in. Cause you're going to be able to go out there and really interact with your audience and with your market and customers. And they're going to help you craft the perfect offer and the perfect message and the perfect design for them. So you're going to be able to serve them best. Scott Todd. What do you think? I, I I think that that last piece, the market never lies, is so important that a lot of people, like they get railroaded with that, right? Like they, like you said, like we see things the way that we wrote it. We see things the way that we see it. And, you know, it's, it's really hard for you to step outside of, of your own body and understand that there's, there's other creatures, there's other people out there that will either agree with you where they'll disagree with you. And when they disagree with you, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty relevant. Like it's, you can see it, right? Like it's cricket. It, there's nobody responding to your offer. And it doesn't mean that, that you necessarily have a bad idea. It just means that the way that you positioned it is bad and you need to keep tinkering with it. And it, a lot of times it's not massive changes either. It's just little adjustments, maybe in the way you said something or the information that you led with. Uh, and so you should go back and, and tweak it, change it, try something different. Yeah. 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 And, I, and Adam, would you agree? Like marketing is sort of a mindset. Your mindset is this, we're just making experiments, right? Let's just try this experiment and see how it goes. Right. We'll put $5 towards it. And if it, the market says no, we'll change our experiment. 
Yeah, I think that's that's a really important point is that even with the best laid strategy and the best laid research and how well you know your customers, at the end of the day, if you're putting something brand new out to the world, there is an element of sort of experimentation and curiosity that I think you want to approach it with because it's really interesting, right? Like if you, if you love your business and you love what you do and you love your customers and serving them, it's a lot of fun. You get to go out there and say, all right, how can I serve them best? What messaging can I use? What kind of offer can I put out there that's really going to help them get the results that they're looking for? And then, yeah, you've definitely got to expect it that it, it may not click on take one or take two or take three. Uh, obviously, the more sort of effort and prep you put ahead of time, the, the better your, your results. But Scott, you brought up a really interesting point there that I really want to hammer on, which is that we are not our customers. So even if we start the business with the intention because we're solving our own problem or our own need, we're not our customers just in the fact that we are the business or the service provider. So we've got something, I believe it's called the curse of knowledge, where we know way too much about our business and about the inside of it that it's almost impossible for us to totally separate from that. So we're, we can try and be empathetic. We can try and put ourselves in our customer's shoes and all that, but we know way too much. And we know like a level 10 out of 10 where our customer might be at like a two out of 10. And so we, we tend to bring it down a little bit, but, but probably not enough. The, the odds that everyone could simplify their business a little bit more, really darn good. So yeah, we definitely have to try and sort of be, uh, be empathetic like that and remember that yeah, the better that we know our customers from their point of view and being able to use their, their words and their problems, the better we're going to do. Yeah. I mean, one, one of my favorite marketing books is the 22 immutable rules of marketing. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm revisiting it now only because Scott Todd mentioned it on another podcast. I'm like, yeah, I'm gone. I haven't read that in a while. Yeah. And now that I'm reading it again, it's like, oh my gosh, it's just, it's so brilliant. And, and even, even though the, uh, the examples are so old. Yeah. Um, yeah. It still applies, right? <laughs> Scott, when was the last time you read that book? Oh, listen, I just, in fact, uh, last week. Last week, I, uh, I went through it again. I tried to, uh, to, to go like two, two X uh, on the Audible while I was reading yeah. at the same time, which does make a difference. I know you said three X. I tried it. I'm like, I can't deal with the three X. Two X is max for me, but uh i'll tell you it, it it's the the examples are are terrible right like because they're so yeah. old it'd be great if they could update it you know more modern stuff but it really it really does make you kind of question like wow what the heck ha have marketing managers at some of these companies like never read this book <laughs> because yeah. like it's you see like they gave up their position what what are they doing yeah that's um that's such a good point and it's it's a shame that we see in the industry all the time whether it's through marketing managers or cmos or business owners or even marketing agencies uh or, or marketing consultants is again it's that focus on the tactics again so you go see them and you're looking for say a youtube advertiser a youtube um specialist or a twitter specialist or whatever it is and yeah, and, and all this stuff goes on to the front end and how are we going to make a flashy video and how are we going to target it and all that. And then all the lack of that foundational stuff with the positioning and what message are we really trying to get across and what's our branding conveying and what's our goal of the campaign. All of that just gets tossed to the wayside. And it's a shame because what ends up happening is you got to spend twice as much, five times as much, 10 times as much to get the same results as what you could have with just a, a little bit of effort. So yeah, totally, totally valuable book. Yeah, you know, you know what's interesting about that is typically in business, if you ask a bunch of entrepreneurs, what's tougher, strategy or execution? Nine out of 10 will say execution. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to marketing, right, it reverses. Yeah. The strategy is really where the thinking comes in and the execution is just a bunch of experiments, but you have to go back to your strategy. But the real work, 80% of it is just getting to know your customers so well. What keeps them up at night at three in the morning? Mm -hmm. Right. And asking them, like, what is it? How can I solve this problem for you? And then getting that messaging so, so powerfully, you know, transmitted that it, that it actually breaks through that noise. I mean, that's, that, that takes an Adam Earhart type of, uh, you know, professional. It, it takes a certain level of curiosity and um, OCD, I think. Yeah, when we, when we take on a new client, there's a lot of, of uh, sitting and writing and really like hashing out images and ideas. And like when I write a Facebook ad, say it's just it, whatever it is, however long we decide it's going to be, that ad has been written 
dozens and dozens of times after interviews with client customers, interviews with the client themselves, extensive questionnaires. And I mean, it has just been crafted so many times that by the time it's actually going out there to the world, I mean, this is, we've already written this thing like just a ton of times. And even then we're still going to test it because as great as we think it is, we never know which image is really going to resonate, which image is going to get that click, get them to the next stage. And so that's why we test everything because as, as good as we think we are, sometimes we still, we never know which one's going to click. So yeah, it's a, it's a fun, but a very uh, work intensive process. All right. Fantastic. Well, Adam, we're at that point now in the podcast where we're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Okay, awesome. Well, seeing as we've been talking so much about Facebook ads, uh, one of the most important part of the Facebook ad, and essentially when it comes to marketing in general, is that image. The image is crucial. And a lot of people are always wondering, all right, where am I gonna get cool new pictures, cool new images? There's a number of paid, so, um, royalty free image sites out there, but there's a free one that's kind of my go to that's, uh, it's kind of becoming a little more well known, but it's still pretty underground and it is called unsplash.com U N S P L A S H.com. And it is a treasure trove of amazing images that tell stories. They invoke feelings and it's valuable. So you spend a bit of time in there, dig through, find the right image for what you're looking for. And you can use it on your website or in your Facebook ads or any other sort of media source. Amazing resource. I love it. I love it. Yeah. This is, this looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really good. It's one of, and I guess the only other resource is uh, I've got a free Facebook ad image guide to help you choose the right image, which you're able to get just on my website there. So if someone wants to go sign up and get access to my uh, free PDF on how to pick the absolute most perfect image for your Facebook ad, which will increase your conversion, they can download it there. Fantastic. Fantastic. Scott Todd. What's All right, Mark, this week? This one is selfish. It's just for me only. So, you know, I, if, if it's a value to you, great. If not, look, I give too many other good, good ones. So I'm going to enjoy this one. Check this out, Mark. You know, I love my drone. And right, we right. were just talking about like the goggles. And look what came out. It's the DJI goggles. So DJI.com forward slash product forward slash DJI hyphen goggles. Wait, DJI. And goggles dji goggles and let me tell you you can control your drone just by moving your head <laughs> whoa <laughs> that is crazy yeah, yeah. crazy that's, right that's crazy yeah it shows you the flight path uh where it's going oh oh that's I'm that's to really some land. that's really cool um, I'm going to have to get this thing. It's like you're flying, man. It's, I, I, I mean, I, I'm sold. My wife is going to be so mad, but uh, it's worth it. You know, surprise her. You know what? It's always better to ask forgiveness and permission. Honey, well, how I, come I haven't seen you all weekend and you've been, just been wearing goggles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been right here. What are you talking about? Yeah. 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 Wait, what about the kids though? Are the kids going to want to do this? Do I have to get like a whole bunch of them? Well, that's a Face scary thought, especially if it allows you to control the drone with your head. So yeah, you might want to have a bit of a briefing, a pre-flight briefing before strapping those on anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, Mark. My, my son's not allowed to touch mine, so it's mine, man. You, yeah. want, you want one, you get, get it yourself. All right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Teach them responsibility. Get a job. Hey, self-control too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Adam Earhart at adamearhart.com. I have a, a link to his site. Um, he also has a podcast. What's your podcast, Adam? Podcast is the Modern Marketing Podcast. The Modern Marketing Podcast. And we're going to, after this, pod, this podcast, we're going to get us on the podcast, Adam. There you go. So maybe there we'll you get go. on. Yeah. Um, and um, very, very cool. So adamearhart.com. Adam, uh, I was going to ask you about Ad Espresso. What are your thoughts about mm. Ad Espresso? Uh, Ad Espresso, I don't use it. Um, there's a couple different ones available, all sorts of different like ad sort of um, supplementary help things to help you craft out your campaigns. The way that I run 
my strategy and the way that I design it, it's not as helpful to me just because I like to have full control over every aspect of it. I think if you're just getting started, it can be helpful. Uh, but again, it's one more thing that you're going to have to learn. So anytime that we introduce new software, you not only now have to understand Facebook and the mentality behind it and how to craft the ads, but now you've also got to learn ad espresso. And I think also is that it's a cool piece of software. I've got colleagues that use it, uh, some clients that have tried it in the past. I have used it before and, uh, and gave it up basically just because it didn't mesh. So might be worth a shot. I think you're, if you're just getting started, I'd probably hold off on it until you learn the strategy behind it so that you know, all right, let's split test the image next. Let's split test the headline next. Let's put together all these different combinations and structure our campaigns the way that we want them rather than just going out there and blasting like a hundred different ads and a hundred different images and not really knowing why it worked or, or which one it was that was the best or not knowing again, that strategy behind it. So short-term great tool. If you want to play the long-term game, really get in your business. I'd probably just stick with the main Facebook ad platform. Okay. Fair enough. And that you're like the 50th person to tell me that by the cool. way. Cool. Cool. There yeah. we go. <laughs> so that's, that's really interesting. Um, Scott Todd, are we good? Mark are great. Adam, are we good? We are good. I want to thank all the listeners. Um, I want to remind everybody that Today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io. You can always make more money, but you can't get more time. This is the only financial, automated financial CRM on the market, a set it and forget it system to automate getting paid. Whether you're an orthodontist or you're a land investor, this is a one-time set and forget it system. Collect ACH, ACH fails to collect your credit card. Credit card fails, collects the ACH. You will get paid regardless. Check out geekpay.io. All right. Um, I also remind the listeners, look, the only way we're going to get quality of guests like an Adam Earhart is if you do us three little favors. You got to simply subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit um so scott you ready <laughs> mark we achieved perfection like live at boot camp do, do I, we, we alive was great it's really tough on the okay on the on the, uh, on the zoom A here adam i'm sorry but okay mark ready one one two, two three three let freedom ring. Terrible. It's terrible, but not that bad. I think it's getting better. I'm, I'm not sure what that was there, guys. You might have to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> might need to, to resync it. Yeah. We, Adam, we did, we're not, it, we did it live. Okay. And it was perfect. It yeah, was like, great. And the energy perfect. in the room was great. Yeah. Yeah. I, but, but I think it's a delay between us like recording that's why yeah. i think it is because perf live we're, we're perfect yeah but it's fun to try scott every time every time we're and it's, fun, it's fun reel. to watch the guests be like oh god what, what is we're gonna we're gonna what sizzle reel all the guests yeah I mean, that'd be so funny just to see their, their faces like they're shaking their head oh no maybe maybe that's a right. great video to put together mark and then at breaks at boot camp we just play that like all the guests that would be good. face palm. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. you imagine like everybody to be like, I don't know if it's a bloopers or, you know, like, <laughs> or if they, it, it makes them like leave the room for a break. I don't know which one it is, but we'll see. It's not bad. All right. Well, thanks listeners. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Thanks Adam. Thank you.